Good morning, this is Mr. Willie in West Virginia. It is January the 30th, and uh, I'm a, we're on a two-hour delay in my town here. So uh, in a little bit, I've got to take my children, grandchildren, to, uh, and the na- one of the neighbor's children to school. So uh, I-, I was getting ready and in the bathroom, and, and the Lord just whispered one word. And, you know, I want to encourage you all that wonder whether or not God speaks. Sometimes what he does with me is he just whispers one word, and the word was rejected. And I knew exactly where he wanted me to go in scripture. I knew exactly what he wants to kind of say to you today. So I pray this word would help some of you um, because we've all felt rejection. Uh, I've been rejected. I've rejected other people. And, um, you know, when you're rejected, you feel like the value of your life is is a zip. You know, rejection devalues you. Uh, And and I want to read a scripture and, and share a couple words with you about rejection and uh, I'm reading uh, from Isaiah and originally when I did my first take I did it out of the Amplified and it was just too wordy so I'm going to read it to you out of the King James which is very poetic Uh, it's old English and hopefully it'll still minister to you it always does to me Uh, Isaiah 53 and it says this is about the Messiah the Messiah's death being predicted it says who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed for he has grown up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did, we did esteem him stricken of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from the judgment. And who shall declare his his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the for the transgressions of my people. Was he stricken? And we'll stop there because, uh, you know, quite honestly, most of us, when we're rejected, you know, we want to tell somebody. We want to go cry on somebody's shoulder or, or, or we're too ashamed to say anything because we're embarrassed. But, you know, in this day and age now, when people are rejected or a relationship goes bad and they feel like somebody did them wrong, they get on Facebook and they want to tell everybody I was rejected or he was mean to me or she was she was horrible to me. You know, and, and the truth of the matter is that rejection is not the end of the world, people. For Jesus, it wasn't even the end of the world. Reje- he was rejected by, by people back then and cru- crucified. You know what? It wasn't the end of the world. It was the beginning of your world. It wasn't what we would consider a disappointment. Jesus knew what was going to happen. For us, we don't know what's happening, and we kind of we, we kind of like to throw out the word that we're we, you know I'm so disappointed now. And I want to share with you something. The word disappointed. If you break that word up, the dis and the appointment. Whenever somebody. Whenever dis is on the front of a word, it's almost like what we, what, 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 is, what is said with a lot of young people, and he, he dissed me. Dis means that it's, there's an absence of whatever the word is that's coming up. So absence of appointment. So when you're disappointed, you're saying that there's an absence of an appointment that I was really kind of expecting to happen. And what you find out when you begin to follow Christ is there are no disappointments, folks. I never get disappointed anymore about things. I I don't get disappointed by people. I'm not disappointed by situations. I'm not disappointed when things don't go my way because I know that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I know that he has got my back at all times. And even when things don't work out, his scriptures tell me that even, and we all know that, we know that, oh gosh, the the, the scripture just kind of left my head. And I'm going to read it to you. It's out of Romans. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, who are the called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8, 38, one of, the best, one of the best scriptures in the world, because sometimes things don't go the way we think they ought to go. And maybe we feel a disappointment. But the truth of the matter is that God can take bad stuff and make it good. You look at the story of Joseph in the Bible. It's a perfect picture of somebody who kept 
having things go wrong and could have said, gosh, I'm so disappointed. God, I'm so disappointed. The guy had two dreams that God gave him, two dreams that God gave him about him ruling. And you know what? His brothers were already jealous of him. So what they do, you know, they found an opportunity. They really wanted to kill him. But one brother decided, no, let's not kill him. Let's just throw him in a pit. So they threw him in a pit and then they ended up selling him into slavery. Talk about dysfunction. Sold him into slavery. He ended up in, in Egypt and ended up being like second in command of the whole place because he had such a great spirit about him. And there were other things that happened in his life while he was there. You know, there were, I mean, he, 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 he found favor uh, with, uh, with, with, the, with, the, with the head man, but then the head man's wife liked him and she kind of took a liking to him and almost tried to get him in trouble, lied on him. He ended up in prison and in prison, he, they took a liking to him and he ended up doing some great things. But all in all, he ended up right where God wanted him and that was in the palace. Royalty, kingship. What I'm trying to teach our congregation right now is about the kingdom of God. And what, what you all need to know is that you are ordained to be royalty and priests in God's kingdom. So you've got to allow things that don't go your way to be a part of the plan. I don't have any disappointments. I'm, I don't get disappointed when people don't do what I want. I don't get disappointed when, because I know that God's working everything for my good. You know, there's an initial sting to being rejected or an initial sting to something not going right. But when I get my head about me, when I get my spirit, when I let that spirit man come in and, and start to realign me to God's word, I start to realize that, you know, this may seem like a disappointment, but maybe this is exactly what God wants. He's taking me somewhere. He's taking you somewhere. So don't let the rejection of men derail your life. You know what? Shake it off. Get into your word. Ask God, what's the next plan? Because things go wrong in this life. I've had a lot of things go wrong that have kind of derailed me, but the truth of the matter is whenever something goes wrong or whenever something's not going my way or when I feel like maybe I'm a little disappointed, I seek his face more because I want to know what his plan is, where he's taking me from this position. A lot of you feel rejected. You feel, you feel bad because life isn't going the way you want it to go. You got to get into your word. You got to look in your word and see that, you know what? Jesus had so much go wrong just in that short amount of time when he was just, just at the end of his life that he could have, man, it would have depressed any of us. When he was in the garden praying before, it said that he, he prayed so hard that he was bleeding out of his forehead because of the intensity of what he was getting ready to face. He knew he was going to be beat. He knew he was going to be rejected. He knew he was going to be spit on and people were going to uh, throw things at him. And, you know, a couple days ago, he came into Jerusalem triumphantly on a donkey with everybody giving him a parade. And then the next thing you know, he's being tried. And it's, and it's all lies. But it's not a disappointment for him because he knows where he's headed. He's no, he knows that his life is headed toward death and resurrection. See, the disciples were very disappointed after he was crucified. They were so disappointed that some of them went back to their old jobs. Some of them were just kind of depressed for a while. And, and, and you know what? They didn't listen to him. He was telling them that I, was, I came here to die. I came to die, but I'm going to raise up from the, from the grave and, uh, on the third day, and I'm going to redeem Israel, but I'm going to also redeem the world. They were looking for a king that was coming with a kingdom that was going to take over the Roman uh, kingdom that was, that was over, to, over top of them, that was kind of had them in, 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 uh, in bondage. They were looking for, for a physical king. They didn't realize that they were getting a physical king, but also a spiritual king, a king that was going to take them into a kingdom that, that is not of this world. I don't really get messed up about what goes on around me. I don't get messed up by politics. I don't get messed up by relationships. Not for a long time. I don't get messed up because my children aren't where they need to be. I don't get messed up that long by, by maybe not working a job or, or getting fired from a job or, or whatever because I know that God, what looks like a disappointment on this planet is an appointment by God. He's taking you somewhere. He's taking you somewhere. Look at what's going on and understand that you know, God has your back. He's going to get you where you need to be if you trust him. Scripture says to trust in the Lord with all your heart, not to lean to your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. I acknowledge as much as possible that Jesus is my Lord, that Jesus is my king. And I know that he's taking me somewhere. And you know what? If you will get to a point in your life where you'll acknowledge that he is king of kings and Lord of lords, that he's your master, 
and that he's the one that's got everything in his, in his hands. He says that nothing can pluck me out of his hand. Nothing. There can be no harm that comes to my life except the Lord allow it to come into my life. You look at, read the story of Job, man. He, he goes through so much, but you know what? In the end, he ends up with way more than what he had in the beginning. People, you got to stop walking in your flesh and you got to start walking by the spirit. You can't walk by, by your sight. You've got to walk by faith. You've got to believe that God has got your back and that he loves you. He loves you. A father that loves you is not going to just cast you away or, or not care about what's going on. We have a God that cares about us so much that he cares about the whole universe. And he also can look down and know the hairs that are on your head. He cares about details. He cares about where you're at. He cares that you're hurting. But he also cares about getting you where you're not hurting. And you got to trust him. Okay? I hope this word has helped you. If it is, pass it on, folks, okay? I'm on Facebook, and a lot of you know I'm on YouTube. I'm Mr. Willie in West Virginia on YouTube channel. And um, just get the word out, all right? Love you. Shalom.